So we're going to talk about the reverse halo sign, uh, which is sometimes also known as the atoll sign. Uh, if you remember, the coral reefs that surround an uh, area of ocean uh, form sort of a semicircle. <clears throat> uh, that's the atoll, but uh, now it's mostly known as the reverse halo sign. Um, and this was really originally described in patients with organizing pneumonia, but there is a differential diagnosis. I'm showing you this paper here. Um, that we published looking at immunocompromised patients, and we'll get back to that shortly. Um, but um, but let's just jump in uh, with our differential diagnosis. So there's three main things, uh, three the three most important entities to remember for the reverse halo sign. Those would be organizing pneumonia, pulmonary infarcts, uh, and infections, and particularly in immunocompromised patients, you want to think about mucor mitosis. Um, so we'll get to the infections in a little bit. Um, let's start off by looking at some cases. Uh, so so we'll start off with this case. This is a very nice example of the reverse halo sign. So what is the reverse halo sign? Uh, it's an area of airspace opacity that is denser peripherally than it is in the center. You may either see peripheral ground glass with central normal lung or peripheral consolidation with central either normal lung or ground glass. Um, it's important to distinguish this from cavitation in which the center of the lesion has true air density. Um, so that's not the reverse halo sign. So in this case, we see peripheral consolidation with central normal lung. Um, there is, this patient has several foci here. Here you can see a focus of um, some peripheral consolidation with central ground glass. Again, here we've got peripheral consolidation with central ground glass. Um, and this patient has organizing pneumonia. It was actually cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, meaning that there was no known cause, although we probably more commonly encounter organizing pneumonia in the setting of um, uh, autoimmune disease or uh, drug toxicity, but this case was cryptogenic. Another example of organizing pneumonia here. Uh, again, here we've got these curvilinear areas of consolidation with central clearing. Here's another nice example of this. You'll notice that these regions do not have to be completely circumferential. Um, and in particular, we tend to see that in cases of organizing pneumonia, the, the uh, airspace opacities do not uh, form fully circumferential consolidations, whereas in many infectious cases, the consolidation is fully circumferential. But that's not a hard and fast rule. Um, here you can see this one's mostly circumferential in the right lower lobe. So again, this is another case of organizing pneumonia. Remember, in organizing pneumonia, the opacities tend to be um, either peripheral or peribronchiovascular. And again, the, the reverse halo sign is not necessarily present in these cases, but if it is present, it can be very helpful to make the diagnosis. Now, other inflammatory conditions uh, can also produce the reverse halo sign. Um, and here's a patient with vasculitis with granulomatosis with polyangitis, formerly known as Wegener's, um, that uh, presented with reverse halo sign here. Um, another very nice example of reverse halo sign with peripheral, either peripheral ground glass and central clearing, peripheral cons oh, consolidation with central clearing here, um, without a known history, you would probably have thought this was organizing pneumonia, but it turned out to be uh, vasculitis. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned, the second important entity to think of when you see a reverse halo sign is pulmonary infarct. And this is an example. So in the right middle lobe, we see a triangular peripheral area of consolidation uh, with central clearing. Now, in this case, the central clearing is ground glass. Um, notice the triangular and peripheral shape here, so you should always Think about uh, pulmonary infarct if you have this distribution. 
Whereas, as you saw, the organizing pneumonia cases, many of those were more central, so you wouldn't really think about pulmonary infarct in those cases. Um, and here we can see, I'll just window it a little bit better, that um, there is an embolus here in the artery to the lateral segment of the right middle lobe. So this is a case of pulmonary infarct. Now, the third main category um, of entities that cause the reverse halo sign are infections. Now you have to, whenever you're thinking about uh, infections, you have to really consider the host. Um, do we have an immunocompetent host or do we have an immunocompromised host? Um, and maybe there are some other useful historical factors as well. Um, so let's first talk about the immunocompromised host. And in particular here, I'm talking about neutropenic patients. Um, neutropenic patients are at increased risk of angioinvasive fungal infections. Um, <clears throat> and while the most common of these is aspergillus, um, we always have to consider mucormycosis because that requires stronger antifungal therapies. So um, one of the ways we can uh, suggest, based on imaging findings, the presence of mucormycosis uh, is if the patient has a reverse halo sign. In the case of mucormycosis, the reverse halo sign represents, you can see this patient kind of has patchy reverse halo signs everywhere. Um, That's kind of a large one here. Um, you'll notice that in the cases of these fungal infections, the reverse halo sign may be a little bit less well-defined than in uh, the cases of organizing pneumonia. In uh, angioinvasive fungal infections that cause a reverse halo sign, this reverse halo represents necrotizing infarction of the lung parenchyma. Um, the center is basically just totally necrotic. Um, if you do an MRI, you'll, you'll see that there's no enhancement at all in the center of these reverse halo signs. So here is a nice example of reverse halo sign. This patient with mucormycosis. Um, and I'll show another example that's a little bit better defined here. So we have a large area of consolidation in the left upper lobe with central ground glass. Again, in the cases of these angioinvasive fungal pneumonias, the reverse halo sign in the center tends to be ground glass. Um, this patient also has invasion of the mediastinal fat and invasion into the anterior chest wall here, um, which are other features to suggest mucormycosis. And I, again, I just want to emphasize the importance of suggesting mucormycosis is that these patients require typically stronger antimicrobial therapy than simply the patients with aspergillus. Now, it is important to note that patients with aspergillus alone can also develop the reverse halo sign. And here is an example of this. Here's an example of this in the right lower lobe. You can see a large area of consolidation with central ground glass. You'll note that the entire region of consolidation is not enhancing here compared to the enhancing atelectatic lung. Um, in this case, even though we suspected based on imaging that this was be mucormycosis, it turned out just to be aspergillus based on a biopsy. Um, so we can't always be correct. And in fact, if you look at this paper that we published, uh, we found a nearly similar prevalence of aspergillus and mucormycosis in our series of immunocompromised patients. Um, but again, if you see the reverse halo sign, you should at least bring up the possibility of mucormycosis so that the clinical team can decide and they may uh, pursue biopsy in many of these cases. Now, there are other entities that will give the reverse halo sign um, and infections. Um, you can see this in bacterial pneumonias. We've particularly noticed this in cases of Klebsiella pneumonia, like in this patient. You can see a large dense area of consolidation in the right lower lobe and this area of central clearing that later went on to actually cavitate. Um, and this was a case of uh, Klebsiella pneumonia. This was not an immunocompromised patient and therefore we did not suggest and basic fungal infection for the etiology here. Um, other cases or other causes would include tuberculosis. Um, now, usually tuberculosis is 
evident as the diagnosis from other imaging features. You can see this patient has lots of tree and bud nodules and a confluent area of consolidation in the right upper lobe and many other tree and bud nodules in the left upper lobe. But you can see some areas of peripheral sort of consolidation and central clearing here. Here's another example. Um, and here's another nice example here in the right lower lobe. So peripheral areas of consolidation, or in this case, tree and bud nodules with central clearing. Um, so this is something described in tuberculosis, but as I mentioned, usually the diagnosis of tuberculosis can be made based on other imaging features and the reverse halo sign is not particularly important for that diagnosis. Um, and I just thought I'd show this case as well, uh, which is a patient with COVID-19 pneumonia. And we've noticed that the imaging features of COVID-19 um, tend to be that of organizing pneumonia. So we, here we can see a peripheral consolidation with central clearing here, um, which if you didn't necessarily have a history, you might think this patient had organizing pneumonia, but this turned out to be COVID-19. Now, moving on to less common entities that can cause the reverse halo sign. Um, malignancy is another important uh, entity. Again, tends to be the case that you would make that diagnosis without necessarily the reverse halo sign, uh, but it is important to be aware that that sign can be present, particularly in adenocarcinomas. So here we see a ground glass nodule in the left lower lobe with um, some peripheral increased density, peripheral consolidation here. Um, this nodule was persistent over time and was resected and shown to be a lung adenocarcinoma. We have another case here of a large mass. With central areas of clearing and or pseudocystic change here in the left upper lobe. And this is uh, also an adenocarcinoma. Again, you might think this could be a pneumonia. We would not confuse it for anything else. Um, but this was also persistent over time and uh, proven to represent an adenocarcinoma. Finally, I want to mention post-treatment changes. <clears throat> so this patient, I'll show the post-treatment imaging first. This patient had a nodule in the lingula here, and this was treated with microwave ablation. And on the post-ablation CT, you can see an area of peripheral consolidation and central clearing. The nodule is buried somewhere in here. Um, so both radio frequency and microwave ablation will give you a reverse halo sign appearance that does kind of tell you the um, treated zone in the lung, and this will eventually contract over time. Now there certainly are other entities that can cause reverse halo sign. I'll show you this is just one review article um, uh, by Dr. Marum and her colleagues um, showing uh, you know, reviewing a number of the cases and different uh, causes. Um, but as, again, I just want to emphasize the three most important ones to think about are inflammatory etiologies, particularly organizing pneumonia, pulmonary infarcts, and infections. And if you have a neutropenic patient, you always want to consider the diagnosis of mucormycosis if you see the reverse halo sign.